Hi, this is Eric Kaiser with Cisco Ironport. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure the uh, ASA for WCCP. Currently, we've already configured the uh, web security appliance, Cisco Ironport S170, web security appliance. Um, you can see that I'm under the t section transparent redirection. You can get there by going to network, transparent redirection will bring you to this screen. I already have a WCCP profile, service profile, created. Um, we can click on this name uh, to re-log in. And then from there we can um, expand this service profile name and check out the details. So we're going to set up service ID 90. We're going to redirect for ports 80 and 443. Um, we're also telling the WSA to send its uh, uh, to negotiate with this device which is the inside interface of my ASA firewall. We are also specifying load balancing method to be hash only. This is an ASA. We're not going to be using mask. Mask is for switches um, unless you're dealing with the 6500 which then um, if you have uh, a robust enough uh, CPU you can go to GRE or you can use hash, um, and then you can also use the layer 2 forward me layer 2 forwarding method um, or GRE on a 6500. Anything lower than that, you're going to be doing um, a mask, and you're going to be doing uh, layer 2 forwarding method and layer 2 return method. So we have this all configured. So now we're going to go to our ASA, or actually I'm going to show you my little diagram. Here's my little topology, a little simple uh, drawing. Looks like I used crayons. Um, at any rate, here's my ASA, um, directly connected uh, hypothetically to the internet or my ISP. And from there we backtrace to the switch, um, Cisco 3550, which then also has a WSA connected to it and a PC. So ideally we're going to redirect traffic on the inside interface of the ASA. So as this PC makes a request, the ASA will then process it based on the subnet and port type. And if it matches the ACL, it will then redirect it to the device that it has a, a, a neighborship established via WCCP with the D WSA. So let's go ahead and jump on our ASA. You'll notice uh, <laughs> I'm in config mode just a little bit. And the first step is let's create our access lists or access list with two statements. So access list, we will name it WCCP underscore redirect underscore N. You can name your statement, your ACL, whatever you'd like. I would recommend m make it simple and make it direct so that you know what you're looking at and nobody's guessing. This is pretty, st this is pretty blunt. Hey, this is WCCP. Um, it's, it's redirecting on the inside interface. Um, I don't think it gets more, um, you know, uh, defined than that. So that's the name of the interface of the uh, ACL. Now I'm going to specify my first line, and I have to tell it that it's an extended uh, ACL, and that we want to permit TCP, and we're not going to use uh, the statement IP. TCP will allow us to specify a port, whereas IP will only allow us to specify a source and destination. So now I'm going to specify my client subnet that my client PCs reside on of whom I want to forward traffic from. So now I have to specify a destination and since this is internet based traffic we can go anywhere so therefore I'm going to use any. And equal to my first statement will be port 80 traffic or dub dub dub. There's our first access list. Now I'm just going to repeat the command and I'm going to change a few things up. I'm going to add 443 and then I have to change the line number. This kind of makes things go along a little bit faster. There we go. So now we've created the ACL. Now our next step is we actually have to enable um, WCCP globally on the, a on the ASA. So our statement will be WCCP 
90 specifying the service ID, which we also specified right here. I'll go back to my ASA. So we have WCCP 90. Redirect. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. And we're going to specify the service ID and what the redirect list is going to be looking at. The redirect list is saying, hey, where's my list that I'm going to process, that I'm going to match uh, packets from? And so, well, that's going to be simple. That's going to be our ACL that we just created. So we are redirecting traffic based on my internal subnet of clients, uh, client PCs that I want their traffic to be filtered through the WSA. So I'm just verifying some information here. All right. So are we done yet? The answer is no. Now we have to actually um, apply the ACL to the inside interface. So once again, the command WCCP interface. And if you're kind of wondering, you do a question mark and you can see, oh wow, I really do have to apply this to an interface. And you can see based on the question mark, I have available to me the inside management and outside. So I'm gonna type inside. Then let's see what our next option is. Hey, what do we want to do here? Um, service ID 90. That's what I've been picking. So it's either that or I use the web dash cache, which is standard, um, which is like a default type um, service ID. Um, even though it's in words and not a number, it's really referring to 80. And I want more flexibility, so I'm using 90. And and we'll just kind of keep going through the question marks here. What are our options? No, we really don't have much. It's pretty much redirect. All right, and last but least, let's check this one more time. And look at that. <laughs> we only have one option, redirect in. Boom, WCCP is now configured on the ASA. So now we just need to verify this. How do we verify it? Simple, show WCCP. And first item of information I'm going to look at is my router identifier. Hey, this is populated. I'm talking to something, and guess what? This is the IP address of the inside interface of my ASA. It tells me the protocol version 2.0. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more, just Google WCCP version 2. Um, you can do it probably on a Cisco site, and you can pull up a ton of information on understanding WCCP, which is known as the Web Cache Communication Protocol. Here's our service identifier, 90. And here's our cache engine and number of routers, which we should only have one. This is a very critical uh, field. This tells us how many packets we've caught on the inside interface and processed to the access list named WCCP underscore redirect underscore in. We have zero because I haven't generated any traffic. And this ASA does not have an outside interface configured at the moment. And um, if I tried to go anywhere with my laptop directly connected to the switch on the same VLAN as the... Um, actually, it'd have to be on a separate VLAN. Um, it would probably show up with a bunch of gateway timeout error messages in the access logs of the WSA. Um, but at least you get to see it. Uh, we'll do that in another video anyways. Um, let's see here. If you have a group access list assigned to an interface, it'll show up here. We don't have any currently. Um, we're not using authentication, so this field pretty much doesn't matter. All right, so we've seen that. What is another avenue that we can verify whether the WSA is connected via WCCP to the ASA, whether they've established a neighborship? Well, one thing I can do is I can connect with my console cable from the ASA to the WSA and run the tail command. Now, you can't normally just go in and type tail and see the output that we're going to see. And 
if you watch the previous two videos, you'll understand why. If you haven't, I urge you to go back through the other two videos and take a look because you'll figure out how to enable logging for WCCP. So I'm going to go ahead and control C this. Immediately, we can see our WCCP state here, this entire section, and we are announcing that we are listening on these ports. These are other ports that we can listen to. If you notice, there are six of them for a total of eight ports. So if you want ports 20 and 21, you very well can input that as well into your WCCP um, transparent redirection uh, setup, which is right here. I can add those if I want to. I'm not going to. But you will also have to add them in your corresponding ACL. So you'd be adding lines 3 and 4 for FTP. Actually, FTP might only be, um, you may only have to specify it as FTP and it'll um, listen on ports 20 and 21. I'm not totally sure on that. I'll have to verify that and maybe do a video on FTP. Um, the next section we can see here is we are talking to, uh, we are announcing ourselves actually. Um, this is the weight. This is our measurement. So this is a priority. The next area that's something you're kind of would be, it, it's good to to kind of help verify that this WCCP neighborship is uh, actually taking, has taken place and is good. You see the me active state. And then the most critical piece right here. If you don't see fixed alive active forward GRE view valid your WSA is not going to be talking to your ASA and vice versa. And you'll have to troubleshoot what's going on. Um, another thing to mention um, is that you'll want to hard code your interface ports. And what I mean by that is on your ASA you would want to um, get into configuration mode. Um, you know, specify interface, and then if they're gigabit ports, giga ethernet, and whatever port it is, and uh, set the speed to 1000 and the duplex to full. You will also want to do the same thing on the WSA, and once you use PuTTY or Secure CRT to connect to the WSA, type the command etherconfig, and then media, and it lists your interfaces. And this is also good for packet captures when you want to know um, what the MAC addresses are of the interfaces. So when you actually um, look at packet captures, you can kind of determine where packets are going. And remember, the WSA does two sides of the communication. It takes the client communication and processes it, looks at the request, and then um, as long as um, IP spoofing isn't turned on, the WSA will actually go out and make the request on behalf of the client if it's not already cached content that it has. So with that in mind, um, the WSA, once it makes that request to the outside world and it receives the request, it will then pretend it's the website to the client. So you'll actually, in some cases, you will see <laughs> the client's IP which looks like it's talking directly to an external site. And the reality of it is you click on the packet, you look down on the details, you'll see the, uh, the uh, address, the IP address has a MAC address that belongs to um, an Intel or a Broadcom or let's see, Intel, Broadcom or Dell. And now we have a new set of MAC addresses, um, which I am not certain if this is a uh, Cisco NIC or if this is some other type of uh, uh, NIC hardware. This is obviously new. This is our S170 units, which are fairly new. So back to configuring the interface. We would type edit. And pretty much uh, whichever interface we want to use, I'm going to say number one. And it gives us our options. Well, I want 1000 base TX full duplex so I'm going to pick number seven and uh, it's hey are you sure you want to do this um, yep and it's n notice it's warning me you may lose your connection with this so don't do this during production hours if you've already got traffic going through it first time setup knock yourself out shouldn't be a problem there we go 
So let's see here. Notice it didn't change. There's a reason why this WSA auto sense the port it was plugged into and the switch I'm plugged into is 100 megabits. It's not 1000. Most of you out there are going to be using gigabit switches so you're more than likely not going to see this as an issue. Um, but you still want to hard code it so in this case I'm going to say 100 base TX full duplex so I'll go back and type edit um, enter the name of the interface I want to do number one now I'm going to enter option 5 which is 100 base TX full duplex boom yes and it's happy and then we should also have to commit this and notice once we get this box hey what do you want to enter a note so if you want to go through the log files and see who's done what later on you know down the road you definitely can and I'll just put changed uh, speed and duplex of M1 interface. That's it. Um, back to this diagram. Um, for those of you that are wondering in regards to deployments, um, this isn't so much a deployment in, uh, video, but what I will say is where the WSA is positioned currently in this diagram, even in more complex networks, you're going to want it off the switch and you don't want it on your DMZ. Please, please, please don't put it on your DMZ um, unless you're an internet service provider and you're filtering, um, you know, you're running, you're running a filtering service for clients that they can pay for to go through uh, for protection and whatnot from uh, uh, viruses, malware and, um, you know, different types of, uh, you know, if you want to filter based on categories and whatnot to stop employees from going to you know sports sites or adult sites or um, wasting their time on Facebook or whatnot but um, traditionally you're definitely going to put the WSA off of a switch um, you want it uh, WCCP either running on the inside interface of your ASA or it's going to be running on your switch or maybe you have a router that you want to run it off of which hey, as long as the hardware supports it and the iOS you're good to go I, for the most part, that's pretty much it. I uh, think that concludes this video. If you have any questions um, or if if you watch this video and other ideas come to mind that you'd like to see a video of, please, I'm up for recommendations. Um, the more that we can help uh, people understand the WSA and configure it, um, the better off we are. So uh, I thank you and uh, uh, Hope to have more videos out for you guys.